What's up you magnificent folks, how you doing? Toby here bringing you another video and since my YouTube channel lately has been doing as well as Eximus in any type of social environment, I decided to make a serious video for a change, so no stupid jokes, no clickbaits, no weeaboo jokes, none of that shit. What we have today is a serious video comparing different types of weapons for a zealot and just checking how they, how well they compare uh, to each other. With that said, I will not be determining the number one best weapon for a zealot for a number of reasons and I will go through these reasons throughout this entire video, so hopefully by the end of it you understand why. With that said, there are quite a few things I absolutely have to go through before I get into the results, so without a further ado, let's get started. Alright, let's get started. The way I tested these weapons is by doing free chaos sanctuary runs with each of the weapons. Pretty much the same thing I did when I tested different bows for a boazon in a previous video of mine, which you probably should totally check out, but it's whatever. Uh, going back to the topic, I thought of why not just calculate, you know, do the maps on how much damage the Zealot deals with each weapon. But as I started doing these runs, I realized it just wouldn't give the full picture, like how does tankiness or crowd control allows you to ignore some packs of monsters, which most definitely impacts your runtime significantly. Keep in mind, my goal was to run as fast as possible, not to do full clears. With full clears, I can confidently say the result would have been vastly different, but we rarely do full clears when we normally play this game, so I decided to stick to speedrunning in hopes of getting a better representation of the usual gameplay. Going back to the maps topic, obviously the same can be said about only doing free chaos sanctuary runs with each weapon, the sample size is too small, I'm too lazy to do like 10 runs with each one, and you can't draw meaningful conclusions unless you're seeing absolutely extreme results, which you will see by the way. So for the sake of satisfying some of the folks who are as nitpicky as I am, this comparison video is not a definite guide which will tell you which weapon is the best. It will give you a different perspective of how to look at it, what to expect, but it's not 100% conclusive. With that rant out of the way, here's the setup I was using for these runs. I won't go into the details on why I used this item or another because this isn't a guide video. Regardless, it's an overall well-rounded build, though you can probably make it better. There's also another thing to note which makes this a not so conclusive video. I was using the same setup with each weapon which in turn means ignoring some strengths and weaknesses of each weapon. For example, if you have a lot of attack speed on your weapon, then perhaps you can swap some attack speed on your other items for some extra damage and vice versa. Anyhow, as for the exact items, we have a G phase, a High Lord's Amulet, a Duress, obviously would have loved to use Fortitude instead, but I still don't have it made, uh, Zacharum, Laying of Hands, String of Years, Raven Frost, and another Raven Frost, and War Travelers. This one is probably most debatable between it and Gore Riders, but I already have like 50% Crushing Blow, 50% Deadly Strike and 33% Open Wounds from G-Face and Duress, so I just said fuck it and let's just go with the 15-25 to 25 extra damage on War Travelers. Anyhow, next up is Demon Limb for the Enchant precast to make sure I had sufficient attack rating with each weapon plus some extra fire damage is always nice. Call to Arms and Spirit on Switch self-explanatory and finally we have charms which are mostly focused around attack rating and damage. Obviously torch and Annie to round things off. With this setup I always had max block, max resistances, around 20k defense which meant I was being hit at around 10% of the time as well as roughly 12k attack rating after enchant precast. My mercenary was using Duriel Shell and Vampire Gaze as well as Reaper's Toll and the only instance where I would switch Reaper's Toll for Obedience was with the very first test that I did, so let's get right into it. So the first test I did was with my probably all-time favorite melee weapon, Lawbringer. By the way, what you're seeing right now is the damage and attack rating before and after precasting Enchant from Demon Limb. I'll be showing these stats as well as a quick guide how to subscribe to my YouTube channel at the start of each weapon. So why did I choose Lawbringer? 
it provides you with the Cryptify first of all, which also means this was the only case where I swapped my mercenary's weapon from Reaper's Toll to Obedience. Lawbringer also gives you Sanctuary Aura to knock back all undead, and the safety of this item is unparalleled. I, I fell in love with this item the moment I tried it out with my Frenzy Barbarian for the first time, and been using this on my Sorcerer's Mercenaries ever since. Anyhow, as this was my first test, I decided to do more than 3 runs just to make sure I got into the rhythm of how to do these runs and ended up with a 3 minutes 49 seconds average runtime. Overall experience was super easy, felt untouchable, unkillable even, pretty much the usual stuff for Lawbringer. Next up we have Heaven's Light. Not the most spectacular weapon, but has a decent bit of everything, which is a lot kinda neat. I also socketed it with an if, because it has two sockets, so it's one socket slot advantage over all the other unique non-socketed items, if that makes any sense to you. Anyhow, I ended up with 3 minutes 55 average runtime, so already surprisingly slower than Lawbringer. Redeemer. Eh, why not try it out? Very similar to Heaven Slide, but the damage plus 85 mod sounded real sexy. I thought that if Grief is so godly due to such added damage, then perhaps Redeemer is also a potential hidden gem. I'm not sure if I could have been more wrong actually, the average runtime was 4 minutes 50, which was the second worst runtime of all the weapons, but let's get back to that later. Next up, Horizons. I don't have a good reason why I was testing it out, it's actually quite the opposite of a weapon that you want for a Zealot because Zeal naturally provides you with attack speed, lots of it, so anything that scales with attack speed like damage, critical strike, elemental damage, does a lot more for you than just more attack speed. But I did it anyway and it was mediocre, average runtime, 4 minutes 26. This is probably where Variants plays a massive role because on paper it shouldn't be possible for Horizons to do better than Redeemer for example. That or I'm severely underestimating the importance of attack speed in Diablo 2. Not sure, um, anyhow, well, let's come back to this later. Fifth weapon I tried out was Stormlash. Uh, this was the weapon I was more interested in and pretty much the reason I tried out Horizons as well, just to compare the two of them. Specifically I was interested in how other mods scale with built-in massive attack speed of Zeal, so the chance to cast Tornado, chance to cast Static Field, additional lightning damage. Turned out not as good as I expected with the average runtime 4 minutes 31, though I can say that the Static Field effect uh, was definitely noticeable. Flesh Ripper, decent enhanced damage as well as other sexy mods like minus target defense, crushing blow, deadly strike, open wounds. I had pretty high expectations for it, but when I actually did those runs, they felt so slow, I quit mid second run. I just couldn't stand it. So the numbers from this I have is 5 minutes runtime for the first run, and the second run I stopped before even getting to Vizier, but at that point it was already 4 minutes 36 seconds. So I just assumed it would take another minute to finish and the average runtime would be like 5 minutes 17 seconds, making this the absolute worst weapon of all I've tested. The seventh weapon I tried out was Butcher's People. Uh, props go to Dobrinsky for showcasing this weapon while I was looking up Zealot guides to see what I should test out. Personally, I would have never thought of this weapon, but Dobrinsky has this budget Zealot guide where he used this weapon, so I thought, why not? Let's try it out. It has attack speed, it has extra damage, decent enhanced damage, deadly strike, open wounds. It's a pretty good weapon once you up it. The runtime was 4 minutes uh, 3 seconds, so pretty good actually. Next up we have Rune Master. I went for a few budget sockets to take advantage of Rune Master's, well, advantage of having that many sockets. I didn't want to spend too much on it, so I just went with triple F for raw damage and an F for some minus target defense. In all honesty, no idea how much of a difference it would make if I went for some more expensive jewels like 15 increased attack speed and 40% enhanced damage. Not like I had those jewels anyway. Results wise, the average runtime was 4 minutes 25 seconds, so one of the slower ones. Head Striker, sexy maximum damage per level and 100% deadly strike, making sure you always deal double damage. Average runtime 4 minutes 26 and felt extremely slow. Baronar, I hope this item to be a perfect representation of how well additional damage scales with built-in attack speed of zeal, the extra triple type of elemental damage, fire, lightning and cold to be exact. 
Um, results were pretty decent actually, 3 minutes 55 average runtime, so definitely ahead of quite a few other weapons with high physical damage and all those melee bonuses like Crushing Blow, Deadly Strike, blah blah blah. Now, the last of the unique items I've tried out was Stone Crusher, massive physical damage, some extra damage mod, as well as Crushing Blow, Strength and Target Defense. If any of these weapons could show how well raw physical damage scales were built in Speed from Zeal, this would be the one. This and perhaps Redeemer with damage plus 85 mod. Results were one of the better ones for sure, with runtime 3 minutes 57 seconds. At this point I was out of weapons to try out, but I felt this video would be incomplete without comparing them to the godly tier weapons, you know, those crazy expensive rune words. So I went ahead and hacked a few of them with Hero Editor for testing purposes. You will probably get to see me charge these items in my next video, so don't worry about it. Anyhow, I made Oath, Breath of the Dying and Grief. And yes, this grief is also hacked, I'll be making my own grief on stream with the runes I've found, because I know how much y'all want to see me fuck up making grief again. Anyhow, let's get into results. First comes Oath, I immediately notice massive difference, which you can also see in the character screen. If most of the other weapons were showing 3k, maybe 3.5k damage, Oath was sitting at 6000 before enchant. It's a massive difference on paper already, and it truly did feel that way while clearing. Average runtime was 3 minutes 12 seconds. That's a whopping 25% faster runtime than most of the other weapons. And Oath isn't even that expensive. But before we make final conclusions, let's check out the other two ones. Breath of the Dying, even more damage on paper, 7000. However, when it came to actual runtime, the average was 3 minutes 17 seconds, so 5 seconds slower than Oath. Lastly, we have Grief, the roll on it was okayish, almost perfect attack speed, but almost worst possible damage roll. Regardless, the clear speed was 3 minutes 20, so slower than either Oath or Breath of the Dying, though by only a few seconds. And since this was the last weapon I tested, let's overview the results and make a few conclusions. So first of all, here are all the items I tested. I sorted them by three criteria, average runtime, fastest runtime and slowest runtime. It's clear to see that the Oath, Breath of the Dying and Grief take top three places across all three variables. The differences aren't massive, like if you take the fastest run by each weapon, Grief was only faster by one second compared to Horizon, for example. If we take slowest run, then Oath is only faster by 19 seconds compared to Varna. But the difference is still there. So that's a clear conclusion, those godly rune words will increase your clear speed significantly. It will pass not only eye test, but the number test as well. The second conclusion is probably that Oath is pretty damn amazing for how cheap the rune word is. It held the fastest runtime of all the runs, it held the fastest average run, and yeah, it's just amazing how well it held up against Grief and Breath of the Dying. The third conclusion, and this is my personal favorite one, is Lawbringer. I keep telling you guys, Lawbringer is amazing and it truly fucking is. It was mind blowing honestly, not only did it get the 4th highest average runtime, although yeah by only a small margin, but the safety it provides is absolutely phenomenal. With weapons like Horizon, Stormlash, Redeemer, whenever I would get overwhelmed by monsters I would feel like I could die at any moment. With Lawbringer, I never felt that way. Sure, Grief, Oath and Breath of the Dying made me clear so fast, I was never in danger of dying, but they're kind of on a level of their own. Another thing worth pointing out is that having control over where to cast the Cryptify is pretty massive. I had a number of cases where I would clear slowly just because my mercenary was focusing a pack in the distance and that the Cryptify wouldn't reach me, or I was facing a physically mean monster and I would have to wait for my mercenary to come here. I had put one point into Vengeance, but it wasn't doing wonders versus physically mean. The fourth conclusion I wanted to make is that these numbers are very rough representations. I don't think it's possible that Oath is better than Grief, or Horizons is better than Stormlash. 
That just doesn't make any sense in any case. Not only that, but a lot of the results are very close to each other. The difference is like 10 seconds when comparing average run times. To further go into it, if you check the different run times for the same weapons, the differences there are easily more than those 10 seconds. So it's a truly lack of sample size for such testing. What I'm getting at is that while there are clear winners like Oath, Breath of the Dying, Grief, who are just without a doubt outperforming significantly everything else, and while you also have the other two extremes in Flesh Rip or the absolute worst one and Lawbringer in absolute underappreciated, the remaining ones, they're very similar to each other. Which funnily enough reminds me of my Boazon test video where I tested out and compared how all those unique bows compared to Faith, and I found out something very similar. While Faith massively outperformed each and every other bow, between the remaining ones, and that is including Wind Force, not much of a difference. If you want to enjoy the game, you definitely can, regardless of whether you have a Lycan or same, or a Gold Strike bow. So very same here, if you can get your hands on a Barnar, it's good. If you can only get Butcher's Pupil, equally as good. Horizons, sure. Stormlash, same. And this is how I want to end this video. Don't get too stuck on min-maxing in practice, it can make less of a difference than you think. Enjoying the game is what truly matters and you don't need the epic late game stuff to enjoy. With that said, if you believe I missed a weapon or my test is lacking something, let me know. It would be greatly appreciated as I will be making a similar video on Avenger, you know, Vengeance Paladin, so I could implement those improvements right away. So yeah, looking forward to hearing your thoughts, folks. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you all have a lovely day and see you guys in the comment section. Cheers. Hey, this sounds just like you smashing that subscribe button after seeing this video.